Thank you so much. We're not done yet, folks. We have dessert coming, and also we have another candidate here, uh, Mark Cipolla. Come on up, Mark. Uh, Mark Cipolla is running for New York State Senate in the 11th uh, Senate District. Uh, let's uh, hear from Mark. He's been running a very, very, uh, you know, uh, hard-working campaign, getting out to a lot of voters, and here he is. Thank you, Phil. Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody had a good dinner. Um, I was, I was hoping to have uh, been able to enjoy, uh, join you for dinner, but I, uh, I was at a civic association meeting at the time. Last minute, I decided to go. It was a joint civic association meeting of the. West Cunningham Park in um, Utopia something or other. And the way I found out about this was an interesting night. I get a, um, a friend of mine who lives in Fresh Meadows, sends me like a picture of the newsletter. And it says that tonight they were having, uh, Senator Avella was gonna be at this joint, uh, this joint civic association meeting. So I, I looked at the invite and I said, well, you know what, I'm gonna ask for equal time, right? Because We've appeared together at a, at a couple of candidate forums, so I, you know what, I might as well do it, you know, we'll do it again. Just last week, my own civic association, the Hollis Hills Civic Association, sent out our newsletter, and there's a two-page spread on Tony Avella. Questions and answers, looks really nice. Doesn't even mention the fact that the guy's running for office again. It's like, there's no election, I don't exist, and he talks about how, you know, eventually when he retires or resigns or whatever, what he's going to do with the rest of his life. So, right after that, I get this thing from my friend. I said, all right, well, now I'm going to, I'm, I'm reaching out. And I asked for equal time. I sent an email. So this morning, I get an email response back claiming that there's some kind of, you know, glitch in the email. Sorry, it's a late response and blah, blah, blah. But tonight is not a candidate's forum and Senator Avella is not going to be campaigning, so we can't invite you to speak. Thank you, Joe, for paying attention. Uh -huh. So, we, there's this civic association meeting where he, right before the election, where Senator Avella is, I guess, invited to appear, and the email specifically says he's going to be discussing legislative issues, not campaigning. So I'm more than welcome to come as a member of the public, but maybe if we set a candidate's night, we'll, obviously we would invite you then if we do that. So are you kidding me? You've got to be kidding me. I mean, who with a straight face could listen to that, read that, type that, or go sit at this meeting and think that the man is not campaigning. I mean, it's just it's ludicrous. So what is it? It's, it's consistent, the way I look at it, it's consistent with a, a theme that I've had, is that they take us for granted, they think we're dopes, and they just assume have us, those of, of the public that agree more with us, have us sit home, think that it's a done deal, and not get out and vote, and not get the word out. So I decided I was gonna, uh, I all of a sudden become a Facebook guy, I got a Facebook campaign, right, a campaign Facebook page, and I went on there and let some people know, here's this thing, and, um, and I decided to go. So I showed up as a member of the public, and I sat there and I got to listen to some of the puffery of his, and then, what does he decide to discuss? The issue of the day, Joe? Go ahead, give it to me. Hey, you go, homeless shelters, right? The homeless shelters. So he brings it up, the homeless shelter issue, and talking about how, you know, the legislature is now trying to change things, they want to have more notice, and blah, 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 blah. And there's a loophole that the owners are able to get around. And I decided, okay, well, here's my opportunity to raise a hand. And what I, raise my hand. What I planned on asking him was, tomorrow is a year to the day, a year to the day tomorrow, that he had what I believe was his second public hearing as chairperson of the task force 
on this issue, right? He was the leader of the task force on homeless issues. And all you gotta do is go to the web and look it up. Hypocrite. And, and you'll find it. He sat there leading the examination of Stephen Banks, and I forget the other gentleman's name that testified before him that was getting notes handed to him throughout the whole thing. And what did he do? From a year ago until now, what's happened? Exactly, exactly, absolutely nothing, absolutely. But not only, I, I would say even less than nothing happened because a year ago, we know he knew about the issue. We know it. And it was actually more than a year ago that he knew about the issue. And what did he do? Nothing. Now, he talks about, well, the community needs notice. We're gonna try to make a new law. Well, uh, why is he doing that? Because now, all of you, and quite frankly, that's the joke, in, in large part, I mean, I'm not gonna give you complete credit, but I'll give you a lot of credit, all right? You, you brought the issue to the, you know, to the streets. And so now he's paying attention. So he had his, his, his little press conference with a couple of people the day before the march here, and he's starting to pay attention. So, you know, why didn't he do it? Why didn't he send out his own notice, right? I get mail, I've gotten mail from him, probably four or five pieces in the last month and a half, talking about uh, public hearings on different issues, uh, the latest one that I got was on Zika virus. Um, I got another one on, actually there was one on breast cancer today. I did, didn't come in the mail today, but it was there at the, at, the, at the Civic Association. It was a breast cancer thing. They're going to do screening. All very worthy things to inform the public about. However, they're all within the last couple of months, right up to the run, you know, right up to election, right? There's a 30-day rule that you got to stop. You can't send out mailings within 30 days of the election. They are all paid for by taxpayer dollars. Taxpayer dollars that, that he's using to promote himself. And what's the one issue that is that you don't see in any of these things? The homeless shelter issue. So from a year ago until now, he could have sent out a community bulletin. He could have sent out some kind of advisory hey, this thing is going on, you may want to pay attention. It might even be a good thing, who knows? But this is what's happening. Perhaps we should have a discussion about the issue before it got completely out of hand and required people to be marching in the streets and going to people's homes and causing all kinds of, you know, well-deserved well ruckus, but it should have been taken care of beforehand. But just like everything else, he hoped it would, it would just go away and nobody would notice. And, and so what? another thing he says, well, someone suggested that he have a meeting with the owner of the hotels. Now, we know that there was some kind of meeting and supposedly the thing is going to be taken care of. But I, I turned to the guy that was sitting next to me, who, who basically was the guy who invited me publicly. And uh, I said to him, well, you know, he wasn't going to, he won't answer my question. As I raised my hand, he said, I'm not taking questions from my political opponent. From the he actually said that. That's, that's, cool. what, he, that's what he said at the press that's conference. That's what he said. He, he wasn't taking questions from anybody at the press he, conference. He won't take questions from the press conference, at the press conference, from all the, anybody other than the press, and he was not going to take my questions because I'm his political opponent tonight. Okay. So I turned to the guy next to me and said, well, he's not, you know, not going to, he doesn't want to hear about the hearing that's online that everybody could watch, go look it up. And... You can see how much knowledge and information he has and how comfortable he was talking with Stephen Banks and what kind of a relationship they have, all right? How about this one? How about you ask him, why would the guy who owns this place, when you sent a letter to Pre Parana, the U.S. Attorney, you sent him a letter suggesting, actually calling for the man to be investigated, this man should be investigated because I recently found out that he was dealing with a, essentially a corrupt state, state of state senator Kruger. All right, from years ago. Kruger. Kruger. He didn't name Carl Kruger in the letter, though. He just said, you know, why would, why would this man choose to meet with you? 
after you basically dropped a dime on him, calling for a federal investigation of him. He's going to sit down and, and, and negotiate with you now? Another question I have, ladies and gentlemen, and I don't know how many of you know this, but if the owner of the hotels deserves to be investigated because he was dealing with Paul Kruger, and by the way, the article from years ago, the owner comes out and says, yeah, I was, I was, trying, to, I was trying to influence him. Didn't work. I wasted a lot of time and money. It's a great article, if you think about it. What a quote. The state senator, I was paying him through some shell corporation, and I wasted my time and I wasted my money because he promised, essentially, to get me zoning variances, and I got nothing from the guy. I got nothing for my time, and I got nothing for my money. Crazy. So that man should be investigated because he was dealing with, with Carl Kruger. Well, Mr. Avella also took money from that very same senator through the committee. Look it up. There's donations from Carl Kruger's campaign to Tony Avella. So, I mean, I, all I'll say is if one guy deserves to be investigated because he had dealings with him, well, then why doesn't this guy? I don't know. It just seems to me that it's part of the, the part of the hypocrisy, part of the the habit that the senator has of, you know, on his feet saying, "Oh, I just found out this. I just found out that." By the way, you know, in in the letter, he says, "I recently learned of this relationship between the owner and that corrupt senator." How is it that he just learned of that? One years ago. He. That, that's a whole, you don't want to hear me talk about that. that. We'll save that for another one. got that line from Obama. I found out about it. Be, I found out about it. You know what? You, you might very well be right about that, all right? You may very well be right about that. But he, he, he says it a lot. I just, I recently found out. I recently found out. I recently found out. He used, actually, that line on, a, on, an, ethics, on an ethics issue. I recently found out something or other. Oh, when he testified, he actually testified in front of, uh, not in front of him. He testified against at the Dean Skelos trial. He was called to testify, and he said he was honored that Rick Ferrara offered him the opportunity to come testify. And during his testimony, he said that when he became head of the Ethics Committee, he learned, shortly after becoming head of the Ethics Committee, he learned that the Ethics Committee had never, ever had a bill pass through. That it hasn't happened. All right. That was in 2015. In 2010, when he was elected, he said that immediately the first thing that had to be addressed was corruption and ethics reform in Albany. Why did it take him five years to find out that no bill had ever gone through that committee? Why did, it wait, why did we have to wait until he became head of the committee and, and be sworn under oath to, for him to acknowledge that no bill had ever gone through the ethics. You know why? Because it's nonsense. That's why. It's nonsense. He s says I'm going to do something, sounds good at the time, and, and that's just the way it goes. It's just with the way it goes. Anyway, I didn't want to take up too much of your time. Thank you all very much for listen listening to me. One, one, one last shameless plug, I guess, for, for the Rufus King, uh, the house over there. I... I was on trial, picking a jury over at Su on Suffern Boulevard, had a long break. I took a walk down Jamaica Avenue. That place is great. If you haven't been there, you really need to go. You really should go. It's, it's a really, really, really cool place. So, um, anyway, thanks. Hope everybody had a great time. Please spread, spread the word. It's a big district. We're out working hard. Ira made us some great signs. Um, they're they're spread, spreading around the district. And... Um, we're working hard, and hopefully it makes a difference. So thank you all very, very, very much. Thank you very much, Mark. So we have some great uh, candidates. Let's get behind them. Let's uh, work hard. One more month to go. Uh, by the way, that press conference that uh, Mark Sapola just mentioned, that Tony Avella wouldn't take questions uh, from people, uh, one of them was me. I raised my hand, and they said, I'm only taking questions from the media. I said, well, I'm the media wing of the Queens Village Republican Club. But he still didn't take my question. My question was, 
why, Senator Avella, when I talked to you nine months ago at the Queens Village Civic Association and told you that, that there were homeless people being warehoused in the Bell Rose Inn, and you said you would investigate it, what happened since then, nine months ago, back in January or February? So that was, that was me, and we're gonna continue. We're waking up Bell Rose and Flora Park, uh, thanks to uh, Joe's activism in the community and our friends from Maspeth, and we have a month to go. Let's get behind our, com uh, our candidates. Let's join Ira on Sunday. Let's come to Joe's house on October 20th uh, for the next, uh, and, the, and the final before the election, distribution of the newsletters and palm cards for all our candidates. So thank you very much everybody for coming, for attending our annual Columbus Day dinner. Everybody please get home safely tonight. And it's so great to see everyone. Let's continue fighting till November 8th. Let's take our country back and turn our country around. And let's have Donald Trump and our Republican local candidates elected to public office here in Queens and throughout our country. Thank you very much.